Prince of Peace. We invite your presence in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we welcome you today to our Mountain Movers service. We are the Koki Open Bible Church where our senior pastor is Reverend Dr. David Jackson. We thank you that, that you are joining us today and as you are at it, grab your Bible because we are going to dive into the Word of God today. Amen. He's truly an amazing God. Father, we thank you for your presence today. We ask that you, in, that, that, that you engulf us that we open the heart of our understanding so that we will, we will understand this word that is getting ready to come forth today. Father, I thank you, God, that I, that I submit and I yield and I give way to you so that you would have way. Give me revelation in the Holy Ghost to speak forth that which you would like to, for your people to hear today. We thank you for doing it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Today my text is taken from the book of Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. Hallelujah. I would like you to get in your Bibles with me, read along with me, amen? Hallelujah. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. And the same John had his remnant of camel hair and a leather girdle about his loins. And his meat was locust and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the reason round about Jordan. And were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Here and the reading of the word of God. Now the chapter begins with this phrase. In those days. Now, when, the, when he uses this phrase, it means that, that Matthew jumps some 25 years into the introduction of John the Baptist. And the call that he has on his life for such a time as this, because the Bible talks about John is sent here with the prophet, as a prophet with the spirit of Elijah. The reader first realizes here that there is a radical change from the book of Malachi. Now, what happened in the book of Malachi? Let's go back so we can just get a synopsis of what's going on. Amen? Now, Malachi was, was a prophet of God, and his name meant God's messenger. Now, God had disputes with the children of Israel. The first thing they did, they doubted the love of God. The second thing is that there was poor spiritual leadership. They broke covenant with God. They married women who served foreign gods, and they divorced their wives. The next thing they did was they broke covenant through injustice. They didn't care about the poor or the needy. They broke covenant by withholding their tithes and their offering. And let's read chapter 4. It is very short. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be stumbled, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall, and ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the sole of your feet. And in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts, remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto, unto him, sorry, in, Heber, in, in Horeb, 
for all Israel with the statues and judgment. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So here we have... Hallelujah. So here we have the period between Malachi and the New Testament where God had stopped speaking. And, it, and most, most theologians say that it's been, it was 400 years that God had not spoken a word. The period between Malachi and the New Testament, which is fondly known as the silent years. Imagine waiting for a fresh word from the Lord, waiting on a word for the Lord, from the Lord for 400 years. Hallelujah. You know, there's something about silence that makes us very uncomfortable. Because you see, through from Genesis to Malachi, God has always been verbal. He spoke through prophets. He spoke, to, spoke through men. He spoke through women. And all of a sudden, the revelation of God's word has ceased. From Malachi to, Revel to, to, to the, the New Testament, God had not spoken a word. And it's something about silence. It makes us uncomfortable. We are left to think our own thoughts. We are left to imagine the world, the world according to our own devices. Now, in the book of, 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 of John the Baptist, in this book, sorry, John the Baptist shows up as the son of Zechariah and Elizabeth, the cousin to Jesus. And his birth was accompanied with a promise. He shall be great in the sight of the Lord. And John is presented as a prophet sent in the spirit of Elijah before the coming of the great and terrible day. So John here shows up in the wilderness with a word. A word not to say that you, to, to give you houses and to give you riches or to give you cars, but, but, but a stern word, a firm word. And the word was repent. John is saying to the people, repent, meaning to a change of mind that results in the change of conduct. It is not merely a sorrowful feeling, but it, 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 sorry, it involves the very process of conversion where men are born again. This only comes because of the mercy of God. The Bible says that it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. So John says that you need to repent because there's something in your individual lives that is struggling against the relationship that God wants to have with you. So he's saying, bring forth change, bring forth transformation because there's some kind of iniquity in your flesh that is preventing God from having relationship with you. How can you engage a holy God when you have not repented of the iniquity that has happened in your flesh? And when I say iniquity, I mean, I mean gross injustice, I mean wickedness, I mean sin. And when I say wickedness, that the things that we knowingly do, that, that is wrong, but we do it anyway. And he's saying repent. And after that you have repented, he says to be baptized. Because hmm, this inward transformation that, that you're talking about must have some outward demonstration. Because, you see, you, 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 you can say that, yes, I have, I have re repented and I have changed, but then your, your, your lifestyle, it doesn't show it. The way you speak, you speak profanities, you know, but you're saying that you have repented. And then repentance, it's not, it doesn't just happen when you come to God, but it's a daily thing. Because sometimes we sin and we don't even know it. So repentance is really the order of the day. Every day you have to keep repenting. So you can't say that you're repenting, but still you, you, are, you are surfing pornography sites. You can't tell me that you have repented, but yet still you are, you are fornicating and you are lying. You cannot tell me that you have repented, but still you are engaging in, 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 
and talking and gossiping and, and, and being envious and being jealous. Come on, I'm being real here today. When you say you repent, there must be some outward change that, that will actually show that, yeah, this man has changed, this woman has changed. Hallelujah. It is, it is important that you have, when you have repented, that the, the change must be shown. You can't say that, that you have repented, but you have visited places where, where people have spirits of divination. And I said that in a proper way because I don't want to call the word, but you know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. You can't say that you have repented, but lusting at your brother's wife and lusting at your sister's husband. And that's, that's one of the issues here with John. That's the reason why actually John was put into jail. That's the reason why John had lost his head. Because you see, in that time where we had Herod Antipas, he was, he was the leader. And he wanted to have relations with his brother's wife. And Paul, not Paul, sorry, but John came to him and said, you cannot do that. It is wrong. It is, it is abominable. It is unlawful. It is forbidden under the Mosaic law. And it's because of this that John was thrown into prison because he had, he had spoken a harsh word to this king. And isn't that really like, like some of us today? Some of us, we, we can't take correction. Nobody can talk to you. The minute I say something to you or the minute I, I, I speak a word or whatever, you take offense. And we do that. And we talk about people and we gossip and we do this because really and truly we are offended in our flesh because of correction. And that's what happened to John. That was the real reason why John went to jail. And after losing his head, because the woman that Herod married, her name was Herodias, she was pretty mischievous herself. Because not only was she married to John's, to, to Herod's brother, but she was married before that. Right? And they, they all took offense because of the counsel that John had given to the king. So because of it, she and her daughter came up with this scheme where the daughter was dancing. I think the daughter's name was Salome. She was dancing seductively. And the, the king asked, what can we give you? And she said, I want John's head on a platter. It was a plot because Herodias did not like the correction that John had given them. Oh, Jesus, this, this message is something else. Because though, though we are talking about some how many thousands of years ago, it is still prevalent today. That, that I believe now we are living in the last days and Jesus is about to make his second entrance. And John the Baptist, the spirit of John the Baptist, the spirit of Elijah is saying to you and I to repent. Turn from your wickedness because God is about to come back. And you have to, to get rid of these abominable things that are separating you, between, separating you from God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God, so today we want to take the time to repent for the things we knowingly do that we know that they please God because these are the things that are going to hinder us from getting into the presence of God. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Today I want to I wanna talk about John and his ministry and I want to talk to you about turning from the wickedness that's in your flesh that is preventing God's presence in your life. Turning away from the things that we knowingly do, that we know is wrong. It is time for us to repent because Jesus is coming back. And, and I remember I heard one tele evangelist said something about get ready, get ready, get ready. And I want to say it, get ready because the time is at hand. And we, we really have no time to lick around and to play and to dress and to hang out and to party. We need to get our lives together because Jesus is coming back. And the word for today is to repent and turn from your wickedness that is preventing you from getting in the presence of God. It doesn't matter. And you know, I thought about something. When I was reading this, I did a lot of studies. And I went to the eye doctor and they told me, which was so weird, Pastor. They, they told me that I read too much. My eyes are, are getting bad 
um, at a rapid place, a rapid pace. I don't know. I've never heard that before. But they told me that because I, I like this. I get excited about the word of God. And you know, when the Bible talk about John, what he, what he was clothing in. Where is that? Yes, what, what he wore. He wore camels. He wore camels. Camels here and a leather girdle. And what John, and he ate locusts and honey. What John was really trying to, 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 to show us here is that it is not in what you wear. It is not in what you wear. We are very concerned today about how we dress. Oh God, pray for me. Because I got that issue too, you know. I'm talking because I really want, I want God to help me with that. You, you, you are so concerned about how you look. And, and, and what you drive, and you, help me, Lord, Hallelujah! You know, and the kind of shoes you wear, and you know, if you ain't got enough here, you can put some in. You know how we do it. You know how we roll because we are concerned, Josh, about how we look. And Josh, yeah, we are so concerned about how we look. It is important to us. But John was trying to show us here where it does not matter what you wear. It does not matter how you look if your heart is not right with God. You can drive all you want. Hey, you, Pastor, yesterday I went and I looked at a, a Mercedes SUV. Glory to God. Ain't got no money but believe in God. And then I was standing this and I was saying, God, are you really talking to me? Because, you see, it, it doesn't really matter what you drive if your heart is not right with me. If Jesus was to come and I'm driving my SUV and my heart is not right, I and the SUV going to hell. Can I get her in? So that's what John was trying to show us. That it doesn't matter what you wear. Put on righteousness. Put on holiness. Come on, it's time for change of heart. It's a time for change of attitude towards the word of God. Oh, she sata. Today I want to pray. I want to pray for those of us that, that, that's on Facebook and that's on YouTube and that is listening to my voice today because you got some challenges. And this word has hit you in a place where you know and you realize, ah, I need to change. I need to repent. I need a change of heart because there is something in my life that is preventing me from getting into relationship with God. And we get so comfortable in that place that we think that we are okay. And then you may hear a word and you may feel conviction and then you go home and you do the same old thing. No, today is the time to turn from that thing because you may not have enough time as you think you have. Turn, repent, return, turn away from wickedness in your flesh that is preventing relationship with God. I know I'm talking to people on this, on this, on this Facebook and, and, and YouTube today. Say it after me, Father, I repent. Have mercy on me according to my loving, your loving kindness. Blot out all of my transgressions, oh God. Give me a clean heart, oh God, so that I may see of you, that I may worship you. Unveil my eyes. Let me see you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, let me see myself. Let me see the, my flesh and, and, and how, it, how I'm yielding to it. And strengthen me, oh God, so I can pull myself out of it. In the name of Jesus, we, we can't do it without you. Hallelujah. We keep failing every day when we try to do things in our flesh. But God, you are able to do exceedingly abundantly. Above all that we could ask or think. And today, our hearts and souls safely trust in you. Have your way in us, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Our lives must line up with the word of God. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing what you're doing. The bottom line is that God has spoken today and it's time for you to get up from that place and make a 360 turn around and walk out of there. Hallelujah. Make that decision. Turn from the wickedness in your flesh. Make, I repeat myself, make that decision today to repent 
and turn from that wickedness in your flesh. Hallelujah. And God will come in and he will sup with you. Hallelujah. And he will minister to your heart according to his word. Don't you desire a relationship with God? Don't you desire to hear his voice? Don't you desire his presence in your life? Today is the day. Turn. Humble yourself. Submit unto the God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you praise this morning. Today I'm not going to stay any longer because I believe I have hit home. I believe I have hit in the place where I've been bothering you all these years. Now is the time to turn. I thank God for what he's getting ready to do in your life. I thank God for the transformation that we've seen outwardly. I thank God for doing it. In Jesus' name, amen. I am Minister Tammy Person, and I say have a blessed and wonderful day in the Lord. Amen.